Most non-mousepad addicts might laugh at the idea of a mousepad that's more than $50. Some even going as high as $100. That's why in this video I'll be comparing the different price points. See what more expensive mousepads have to offer, or if it's just better to go for one that's cheap. The cheap mousepad we got is a no-brand pad for my Chinese friend Ali. And on the other side, for the expensive mousepad, we got the beautiful Japanese mousepad, the Artisan Hien. In this video, we're going to see what the differences are, if it's worth it going for the more expensive one, and see at which price point you're getting the most bang for the buck. I'll also be including some pads in between, like the Gigantus V2 and the Aqua Control Plus. I'll be rating the mouse pads on the following aspects. Texture, based on feel, performance and durability. These points count double, as it's arguably the most important aspect of a mouse pad. Stitching, based on the feel and looks. Rubber base, based on its grippiness. And bonus. In bonus, I'll give some extra points to a mouse pad if it has any special characteristics worth mentioning. Of course, every pet differs even if they're at the same price point. The goal is mostly to give you an idea of what more expensive pets bring to the table. There are more aspects I would go over in a regular review, such as stopping power and static friction, but I won't add that to this comparison as that's mostly personal preference and can't be rated good or bad, as that differs for everyone. First, let's talk about what price ranges are considered budget, mid-range and high-end. The price also depends on what size you get, so let's take around 450 by 400 millimeters when looking at the prices of all mouse pads, which is generally around the maximum size for a non-desk mat gaming mouse pad. In the budget category, we mostly have very basic cloth pads, things like this cheap Chinese OEM. I got the smallest size, which was the cheapest. The larger size would cost you under $10. On Amazon, there are also some pads that are probably pretty similar. There are also some very popular budget mouse pads like the QCK and Razer Gigantus V2. In general, I'd put sub $20 mouse pads in the budget category. There are also some amazing budget pads not many people know about. We'll go over that later in the video. The mid range features pads like the MP510, Aqua Control Plus, MPC, and the Fnatic Dash. They are generally in the $20 to $50 range. The high end consists of pads like the SkyPad, any Artisan, and the X10. I personally only own two artisans in this price range. These are all above $50. And just to clarify, we're just talking about the price of the products right now, not the quality. Alright, now let's do talk about quality. Of course, one of the reasons this pet is this cheap is because of the size. The bigger version was around $8. Still one of the cheapest mouse pets money can buy. This one is just about what you'd expect really, it's a very basic piece of cloth. Pretty smooth, very boring texture. Haven't used it enough to say much about durability, but I can tell you that it's not very consistent as it gets affected by humidity. It's very flimsy as well and doesn't lay completely flat as it's sort of wrinkled. Surprisingly enough it does have stitched edges that are not even the worst I've seen. I definitely wouldn't call them good though. The rubber base is the same one nearly every mouse pad manufacturer uses. Gets the job done, but because this pad is so small it does move around a bit. During gameplay I didn't notice any real issues with it other than the size and the mediocre stitching. It doesn't feel that great, but it doesn't ruin my gameplay or anything like that. Definitely better than using a piece of paper as a mouse pad. Bang for buck, it's good. Overall quality wise, not really. This is what most people start with when buying a mouse pad, either the QCK or Gigantus V2. They are both very similar typical cloth pads, less flimsy than the $1 pad and the texture feels a bit nicer on the skin. They are not that consistent as they get affected by humidity and slow down significantly with use. No stitching on these which can cause the edges to fray and be annoying on your arm. The rubber bases on these are very good, better than the $1 pad and they stay in place quite well. I used to really like the QCK years ago, as I was using my desk before that, but after having used more premium mouse pads, it's just okay. They are a bit slower than I like. I do like them quite significantly over the $1 pad. Getting into mid range pads, I think the Aqua Control Plus is a perfect example. As I think of this as a pad that feels and looks premium, has excellent performance and still fits nicely into the mid-range price range I defined earlier. 
Whereas the previous two pads had very basic textures, this one feels a bit more special and is more consistent. Definitely a step up from the QCK or like a Corsair mouse pad. It also doesn't slow down as quickly with use. It basically has the same stitching of the Chinese OEM. Not horrible, but I would have liked to see better stitching at this price point. Some other pads in this price range do have better stitching though, I'll go over that later. You can clearly feel the stitching when going over it with your mouse or arm. The rubber base is the same as on the $1 pad, neither good nor bad. So the main difference between this and the very cheap pad is the way better texture you're getting. Now we're getting into the more expensive ones. I got the Artisan Hien here, which is my personal favorite pad of all time. But there are also pads like the Sky Pad, which costs even more and is made out of glass. Unfortunately, I don't have that one. The Artisans used to be even more expensive, but now there are resellers in the EU and the US, allowing for better prices. Availability is still a bit of a problem though. In the description of this video are links to all places you can check if they're in stock. This one is made from polyester and has a very special feeling texture. It's a lot rougher, almost sandpaper-ish. Some people won't like that, but personally I'm a big fan. For those who are not, Artisan also offers some pads like the Raiden, which is super smooth and fast. You want to find one that fits you in terms of speed and feel, and Artisan offers most combinations of those two aspects. Consistency on these is great. Durability is also very nice. The stitching is literal perfection. It looks super clean and you don't even feel it when going over it with your arm or mouse. The rubber base is on another level as well, especially the extra soft versions. Just take a look at how I stick my Raiden to a window. Absolutely insane. The reason I don't give it a perfect score is because for some reason this base doesn't stick as well to some desks and the mid version also sticks less. I also want to give a couple extra bonus points for being able to choose the softness of the sponge. Here's a quick comparison of the hardness between these beds. So, let's go over the scores of all the beds. Difference in quality of stitching was huge when going into the high end. There are some great mid-range pads as well, however, that have very decent stitching that I'll mention near the end of the video. Most pads use the same rubber base, which works well enough most of the time, but again, it's quite a big upgrade when going into the high end. Texture is harder to rate, as personal preference does play quite a big factor, but generally you must go into the mid-range or higher to have more unique textures that are more consistent and durable as well. Putting these scores into a price performance graph, you can see the quality goes up significantly as you spend more money. At least with the pads I used as examples, I haven't found the point of diminishing return yet, where spending more money really wouldn't be worth it. I assume that point would be around the $69 mark, as pads more expensive than the Artisans are pads like the X10 at $99, which I honestly can't imagine to be much better than the Artisans. Haven't used that one though, so don't take my word for it. So, more expensive mouse pads are worth it if you're playing shooters somewhat seriously, and if you want to have the best experience. It's not without a reason the artisan pads are so popular. At least finding a texture that fits you already goes a long way. For more casual or budget oriented players, any mouse pad is already a big upgrade from no mouse pad. Unless you really like the feel of your desk. That being said, I'll list you some pads that I think are amazing bang for the buck at any price point. Some of these I haven't used, like this first one, the Verdecki mouse pad. It's basically the same as a Glide 38, which is a way more expensive pad a lot of people like. It has a unique fast surface and comes in at just $10. Main problem is its availability though, so you have to check for yourself if it's in stock when watching this video. If you have no idea what to go for, the Gigantis V2 and QCK are solid options and available in a lot of different sizes. They are on the slower side of the spectrum, with the QCK being slightly slower than the Gigantis. They have excellent stopping power, which is why these are so popular among Counter-Strike and Valorant players. At $15 for the large one, it's pretty good. Hey, it's Editing PP here. I just wanted to add the Fnatic Focus 3 to the list. I just got it and it has amazing stitching and a pretty nice texture as well. It's quite smooth with a nice amount of control. Very solid option for just $20. Of those I own, I'd recommend the Endgame Gear MPC if you're looking for something fast. 
Fnatic Dash and Aqua Control Plus are great for both speed and stopping power. Others I don't own but are very good to my knowledge are the Game Sense Radar if you're looking for something smooth with more control. The Odin Infinity and Razor Strider are both amazing bang for the buck pads. Fast, rough and comparable in texture to the Artisan Hien. Lethal Gaming Gear also has a couple of new pads that seem very good. You could look at those as well. You basically can't go wrong with Artisan. I personally own the Raiden and the Hien. The Raiden is a super fast and smooth cloth pad. Some sensors have spin out issues with that surface, so watch out for that. I haven't noticed that myself though with my Super Light and XM1, but that doesn't mean you won't. The Hien is a lot rougher and offers a bit more stopping power, still noticeably faster than the Aqua Control Plus for example. For those I don't own, the Hayata Atsu seems really good, decently fast with great stopping power. The Zero is like an upgraded QCK. Another one you could take a look at is the Skypad, which is a mousepad made out of glass. Very expensive, but it's nearly indestructible, unlike other hard pads like the glorious Helios that wears out in a couple of months. If you love hard mouse pads, this is probably the way to go. Also, just a reminder to use good mouse feet. If your mouse feet look like this or this, it might be worth getting some core pads or tiger eyes feet as that will greatly improve the feel of your mouse.